Lord of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that it not to be ashamed, or rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Our Lord said, be aware of the living of the Pharisees and also of the living of the Herod. The disciples who were dull to understand these simple words, they asked, how is it, Lord, that I should be mindful of those things? And they thought they would go and purchase some food and keep for them. Then my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strongly reprimanded them and telling to the point, Have we not seen the miracles that I have done to you? You were filled with twelve baskets. You were filled with five baskets, the leftover things. And now can't you understand being so dull? But I am telling to you all to be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Keeping that in our mind, we also need to recollect the circumstances of today's Christendom apostate period. The way the so-called pastor teachers are occupying the pulpits, the so-called denominational heads with their error of understanding of Bible doctrine has really led into astray many believers to give the secondary things as primary target and the primary things as no value at all. This is a strategy of Satan to give you, induce into your mind this egregious error which doesn't have any value at all. It tries your focus and attention upon the secondary things. And these secondary things include everything but learning Bible doctrine in today's pulpits. When my Lord has said, be aware of the living of the Pharisees, if you could have a look the way how these Pharisees were existing, Lord used the whip of cords to throw them out. The house which belongs to my Lord God Almighty was being a house of business one. This was the leaven of the Pharisees. They exchanged the glory of Lord for their rituals to be surviving in that work. And when Lord appeared, he whipped them with the cord, which he made by himself, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled and the people might be aware that he is a true Lord. The zeal of Jehovah, the jealousness of Jehovah, has to be your leaven. But the way the pulpit's being occupied, the men who are preaching the word of the Lord, organizing crusade meetings for three days, and preaching not even one hour every day, the remaining three to four hours being led for singing, being led for doing this, anything which they think it is right for them in that program. And even though this speaker who they call, or the one who comes to communicate the word, being a background of miracles or healings or XYZ attitude, who has not been prepared faithfully to rightly divide the word of Lord, when this moron comes to the pulpits, you know what are the words that are coming out from his mouth? He blasphemes the word of the Lord and tells, I have a direct communication with the Lord. Lord speaks through me. Lord has spoken to me in a night, in a vision, in a dream. And he says, People will not believe this because their mindset is not arranged properly. There is a problem with their mindset. That is meant that meant to say there is a problem with their thinking pattern. And he says further evidence to that word. 
the so-called moron speaker occupying the pulpit or the podium where they have been organizing these crusades. Since he is a living Lord and I am a living being, Lord communicates only to those living beings. And that communication is not through Bible doctrine, that's what his means is. That communication is for him in a vision, in a dream, in a trance. And the so-called average morons will come to be gathering into that fellowship after the meeting stand in a queue to get prayed from him. And that is the leaven of Pharisees in today's Christendom. Apostate pastor teachers who are not been trained properly. Bear with for them apostasy begin in their pulpit where they start to preach. What little theology comes from their mind is absolutely primarily false. And such kind of an apostate leaders are rampant in today's pulpit. Since it is satanic world, satanic teachers being many, the valley of Bible doctrine is being dethroned where it should have its proper place and honor. And this average moron speaker who has organized the Crusades meeting, he tells, Lord speaks through me. Lord has communication to me. And I was wondrous enough how many people want to believe that lie. I was just marveled to gaze so many people clapping their hands. And that reminds me again to do my DI once again perfect. To go back and drill it. To go back and take the fundamentals again. To go back and tell them as clear it could be for them to understand. That it is only Bible doctrine through which Lord communicates in this completion canon of scripture of the Alekenekedesis, new spiritual species in Christ. There is no other means, there is no other way wherewith Lord can communicate to you. And this apostate leader is trying to attract crowd, trying to raise money, trying to meet the expenditure of that crusadal meetings what they've organized for three days wants to use such kind of a blasphemy talk in the pulpits. And these men are the men who want to advertise themselves. And they never want to follow the principle of my Lord, which tells to us very clearly, if you as a pastor teacher having the bona fide gift, have been faithfully prepared, if you have been faithfully working like a drudge, and you know what you have been preparing, then Lord sends to you the hearers. In fact, when the Israelites have been given an example for us through the book of Isaiah chapter 54 verses 13 and following, children would be happy if they have been led into the way of the Lord. Again, once again, the basic principle which comes back to us, why the generations are failing. Generations have failed to fulfill Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 8. The responsibility laid down upon the shoulders of their parents their parents to train their children in Bible doctrine. When the parents have been failed, it's meant to say the head of the house, who is her husband, her own husband to be more clear, has failed to communicate doctrine to his wife. And in return, the wife has failed to communicate the doctrine to their children. And why the husband has failed to learn doctrine, he has failed to go to the pastor teacher who teaches to him the original exegesis of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Telling them the categorical information, telling them the isagogical information and inculcating to them with the pure dissemination of Bible doctrine, telling again and again what is biblical truth. And since the pastor teacher fails to give them the importance of Bible doctrine in his pulpit. Such are not the pastors who are not grazing, who have not come up from the heart of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
my Lord is very clear, particularly to the designation of this special gift. God's ideal shepherd, I-D-E-A-L, not I-D-O-L. I-D-E-A-L, God's perfect shepherd, is a teaching shepherd. He leads the flock in Bible doctrine. He never drives them to live the pseudo-spirituality of holy life based upon anything but doctrine. Anything includes your morality. Anything includes your miracles, healings, tongues. Your anything includes your extreme asceticism, your legal, legalistical works, your boyish nature, paying penance, paying tithes. But holiness can never be built upon such kind of a ritualistical activities, dear brethren. Kai Hesiotis Thes Aletheia says, Ephesians 4.24 who has been created in true righteousness and in true holiness, says the KJV, but it is wrong. In the Greek it meant to say, holiness based upon the truth, which is Bible doctrine. True holiness is what? Even an unbeliever is going to go to hell, thinks he is holy, when he is not performing the deeds of the flesh to be fully manifested. Even when they are having their gods in their hearts and minds, that's what they tell, they jump around, they dance around, they scream around. And they say, this is the way how Lord is communicating to you. What difference does it make when a believer, being a pastor teacher of in charge of the pulpit, he says, Lord communicates to me apart from Bible doctrine in my vision or dreams, than to an unbeliever in my country like India, where they have been demonly possessed. They also jump around and dance around through the emotion of the music, and they tell that I am speaking to you, aren't you aware? And that is what they tell it is a prophecy for them. And this is the way how they're going to get to be communicated, dear brethren. And how is it possible for them, dear brethren, to think the differentiation between an unbeliever and a believer? And such kind of a moron, average pastor teachers who have been invited to my place have to be thoroughly examined before they could come here. They are not glorifying my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but rather they are glorifying the demonic influence that has been influenced upon those believers who have heard his message for three days. If it were not to the ministry of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to rightly divide the word of truth, to give you that wisdom and intelligence so that you can know and you could be graced upon Bible doctrine. Then, dear brethren, there is no way that you can come close enough to understand this. The scientific phenomena which we can talk around has only two ends to follow. The one is inorganic, the other one is organic. They are not able to realize the scaffolders who have been given a walk to the eternity based upon these temporary things. Science is not the ultimate evolution. Science is just like that scaffolders to hold, to tell you, to make you the path. But science is not the path. If you want to lay down a staircase from the ground floor to the first floor, the staircase is a position for you to understand what it is. But staircase is not the first floor. It is a way to the first floor. It is just like holding that scaffolders hold while they are working to put a slab. Exactly, science is entirely based upon the principle of evolution. The men who want to come around and look these false doctrines and think that they can have some more information between the spiritual and the natural, when they could easily analyze this man who was telling that Lord speaks to him, they will tell that this is a man who has been into hallucination. The word of the Lord is alive and powerful, that's it. The word of the Lord has to be disseminated and inculcated. 
through the ice concept, that's it. There is no other way, there is no other means, there is no other channel that Lord will communicate to you after the completion of canon of scripture in this church age. And that doesn't make you to support your statement, tell him to the point, my Lord is a living one, and since I am a living one, Lord communicates to me. No! Even Satan communicates to you by blinding your eyes, not able to dig in the truth. Shouting, screaming aloud, repeating the same messages in each and every place doesn't make you to qualify as a pastor teacher. What revival you can get in three days? In fact, even Ezra would tell for us, seven days ministry was literally required when they would consider the feast of Passover. Why literal seven days? And that to not one hour a day, they used to sit from morning till to the evening, they could hear the word of the Lord and they could apply it for the next year coming up ahead and glorify the Lord to the maximum. Seven literal days, seven 24 hours days, they would have been taught doctrine, 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 ritualism, followed by the then and then, then and then existed exegetical study. And that was the duty of the Nazarites. And you know, this man who come to the pulpits, they have a testimony. What testimony do they have? Do you have any of the Old Testament prophet who had a wretched life? who are miserably wrong, who were included into this worldliness, and then having the vision of the Lord, and then having seen his dream, coming back to serve the Lord. Have you seen anyone in the Old Testament time, or in the New Testament time? In the Old Testament time, even to approach that Holy of the Holies, they used to take a vow of Nazarites, not metonyms, who are not even able to realize that they were circumcised or not, to approach and to handle the things in the temple. But I'm talking about the Nazarites who would make a woe so that they can serve the living Lord in the purity. And you know what the purity was been requiring for them? To stay pure. Not even to go to those men of their own family if they are dead. But stay pure in that woe so that they can approach the Lord. The Levites and the high priest would be much more pure than this, than this Nazarites with an attitude of holier than thou. And they would stick on to that integrity because they are approaching the things concerning to Lord God Almighty. But when you come to the New Testament, you may say that Apostle Paul was a wretched man. No, he was a legalistically legal man towards the religionism. And for the zeal of the religionism, he went to kill, which was a, which was a legal one concerning when you think to the point of Deuteronomy. He went for the jealous as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ described in the temple. He made a cord. He made a whip of cords and beat them and drove them off. That was his zeal. At the same time, Apostle Paul's zeal, before he could believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was to get back his man to serve the Jehovah and not to follow this man who is Jesus. But on the road to Damascus, the zealousness of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being manifested to Apostle Paul, made him to believe that he is the one, the resurrected Christ. And for three days and three nights, the scales being upon his eyes, without food and water, waiting for Ananias so that he can believe upon the Lord, being baptized as a martyr because he was already a prepared man under the feet of Gamaliel. And there are no wretched man in the entire Bible who could find their character being wrong and trying to come and tell what is right. There are failures, like the Mark, like the John, between Paul and Barnabas, just 28 miles away being from his home, Paul wanted to continue with his mission, but Barnabas and his dear friend John, they wanted to go. The mark, I think so, maybe. And Apostle Paul strongly reprimands him, no, I will not take him for my second journey, and he goes out. And for Timothy, he advises him to drink some little wine, so that the turmoils of his soul could be easily cleared so that he can have the bowel movement and very well, so that he could have the tranquility of his mind with a clear mind, so that he can think and concentrate and apply doctrine in pressure. 
and apart from that how many men you have in the Bible who are wrong you will find Peter the one who was acting hypocritically but when he was being reprimanded by Paul he has changed to die to the grace of the Lord to his maximum loyalty Thomas who was an unbeliever believed without even placing his hands into the wounds of my Lord whomsoever you name them they have it in fact when James being half brother of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told to the point he is a born slave of the Lord it never calls him I am a half brother of Christ that is the loyalty which they had in fact when their personal lives are nowhere recorded in the Bible but then too they were men of purity because they were the Jews and Jews were into strict ritualistic court but when you find today the pastors who are approaching the pulpits and if you could find the testimony they will say earlier I was a drunkard earlier I was a bastard I was this I was that and after seeing a vision my uh, seeing in a vision the Lord I have changed myself If you change yourself, what benefit does it have towards the Lord? Because already you have lost your battle. You have lost your testimony of purity. The greatest testimony of all time which we can learn is from the testimony of John the Baptist. If you were not so much pure, falling into this worldliness, you wouldn't have been given a testimony by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ telling to the point, a man who has been born out of a woman can be no greater than this man. But though we are being born into this Alakanicatesis, the least who has been born into this kingdom is greater than John the Baptist was being told by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But though we are being given this equal privilege and equal opportunity, though we have been given this divine indwelling power of Trinity, though we have been given everything which you can ever imagine in this world, being staying alive in this earth, though you were a man of extreme wretchedness being alien unto Christ into this racial discrimination you are not eligible to be called but in Christ Lord in his grace purchased you from the slave market of sin and set you free by the atoning work of Christ on the cross the eternal redemption which is paid for you and for me on the cross irrespective of racial discrimination every believer now he believes in the Lord what is he is a church irrespective of Jews Greeks Gentiles irrespective of male and female every believer has been given uniquely this unique spiritual life to be executed before our eyes so that by attaining the spiritual resurrection being controlled by the spirit we could be reigned in the body but there is no way dear brother and you can come close to understand these things you know why? You're still battling around to understand what is organic and inorganic. Like those scientific laws, like those scientific inventions. But you are never able to realize the difference between the spiritual phenomena and the natural phenomena. Spiritual phenomena requires your human spirit gets being activated. Maybe your natural phenomena requires nothing. Like the nature of dichotomous one of Zakir Naik or Sheikh Hamad Didad or any other person of this who stands in the pulpit and tells that I have done such and such, that I have been noted for such and such things in this world. So when such kind of a moron minded activities who are there into the energy of their flesh of this worldliness suddenly change by a dream, by a vision, by a trance. And they call, Lord appeared unto me, I need to live a moral life. Lord appeared unto me, I need to work out my own righteousness. You know what all is that? Shirat. Your parents should inculcate to you the fear of Jehovah. Your parents should tell to you, we are serving the pure and jealous Lord who is a living one. It doesn't require even a single blame in your thoughts, in your motivation, in your thoughts, so that you can keep blameless your body. If it were not so, Apostle Paul wouldn't have told to keep blameless our flesh and our spirit. Blameless like the Nazarite woe. 
blame that's throwing out all the bad activities of your of your energy of your flesh and your roles in nature and you till after a long journey of your life living your life like a sodomite and a gomorite living your life like that lot having incest with his own daughters having such kind of imaginations behind your thoughts being a drunkard, being a drug addict and you tell now the Lord has spoken to me in a dream and I have changed and have it truly changed? do you think your one dream can change you? that is in your emotion you are coming and telling dear brethren the true renovation, the true metamorphism, the true metamorphomai will come with the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And you know what? It takes time. It requires for you to sit and learn the word of the Lord. Learning, relearning again and again the word of Bible doctrine. But you know what? Never will they come to know the truth. Never. The reason is that they are indifferent towards the Lord's mind. And as the moron pastor yesterday was telling in his sermon, and he said he has his messages in the YouTube as well, I don't know what the hell he has been speaking in those messages. This man, he tells very clearly, Lord spoke to me, so I am speaking to you. Lord has given me this power, so I am telling to you. And this man, they think, since he is the only alive person wherewith Lord Jesus Christ can communicate to him, because our mindsets, what they have been thinking is wrong. It is not thinking wrong in our mindsets. It is thinking wrong in his mindset. The thinking wrong, telling to the point that I, though I am such kind of a wretched man, I can come now in an example of a dream or a vision and serve the Lord. Of course, no matter how wretched you are, how carnal you are, it is the grace of the Lord you have been saved. But your personal sins will definitely make and count upon that. Your personal sins, which will be applied for you at the judgment seat of Christ, will be taken into consideration upon that. And that doesn't mean that you will lose your salvation. And since you think I have been hearing the messages it the, through the dreams or visions, now I can come and communicate to you and the people foolishly following those messages are not only destroying the Christendom and the integrity and the honor of my Lord, but also they are destroying the true purpose and survival of Bible doctrine in this world. If Bible doctrine, instead of communicating with the eyes concept and grace apparatus of perception through the dispensing technique, and if could Lord could communicate through you directly in your dreams or in your visions, then why is the gift of this pastor teacher given? The gift of a uniquely leadership ability one. The gift of you to build up your unique spiritual life. Why is this required for you, dear brother? If you are not able to understand the simple truths, Lord help you. And if you don't have time to listen to this tape, Lord help you. My work is to tell you, that's it. I am not here to force you to change. I am not here to force you to do which is contrary to your own volition. If Lord would have given me permission to handle your volition, I would have stick to you upon your knees to this ground and I have given you Bible to write. And if there is any error, write again, rewrite again. Even if you could miss a small vowel point. That's the purity which you should maintain in your flesh and in your spirit towards the Lord. Each and every thought getting into captivity for Christ. Being controlled with your mind strength. That's what in the book of Luke we have that great passage. The great passage which an young ruler comes and asks to that man. To Lord and Savior Jesus Christ turning to the point. What I have to do? The greatest commandment is to love your Lord, your God, your Father. With all your strength, with all your mind and, and with all your powers and your heart mind 
represents your thinking and that an account which has been recorded only in the book of Luke. Mind is your main criteria where your Christianity begins. That mind controlled through these visions or dreams is never a criteria. And I am not able to understand how the other states of this country, India, are not able to give top priority for Bible doctrine. Why they are encouraging such kind of a foolish moron pastors? I am not envy, I am not jealous about them. But I am jealous for the glory of my Lord and for his doctrine. And that jealousness drives me to preach it. That there is no proper honor for my Lord's word. There the people will definitely perish. That there is no proper revealing ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit being under the controlling power ministry when you confess your sins through rebound. There the people never give reverence for Bible doctrine. And where there is no proper revelation of Bible doctrine through ice communication, there the people will perish. And how long you and I want to play gimmicks with the word of the Lord by telling Lord appeared unto me in a vision, in a dream, in a trance. Lord spoke to me through an unfathomable tongues. You know what it is? It is their infidel mind. It is their moral sophistries. It is their delusions. But never knowing the truth. What a hell of a life that they want to live in this world just to survive. Telling to the point that I am a pastor and you know what tough work a pastor has. Rather than telling and deceiving the people that the Lord has appeared unto me a vision or dream. He has a tough work like a drudge to sit and study, to be thoroughly prepared, not just taking one verse and exemplifying the circumstances through expository notes. No. Telling to you the depth, telling to you the accurate interpretation, Bible should be interpreted in the way it has been written in isagogical background when it has been written to those audience. And that information applies even till date for us. Because Bible is infallible and inerrant. Bible is immutable and veracity because it is the mind of Christ and since then men, this man never know the truth never want to realize the truth never want to come and understand the truth they have become agents of Satan neglecting the responsibility laid down upon their shoulders and they are communicating the word of the Lord which is profitable for their own selfish desires to be fulfilled. Such is an apostasy in today's pulpit. Apostasy is nothing but in simple language rejection of Bible doctrine and in return acceptance of false doctrine. God disseminates his doctrine for the church age through the man with the spiritual gift of a pastor teacher. And in order to carry out his God-ordained mission, the pastor must first be properly trained. Then once he accepts a position as a pastor, his responsibility, his obligation is continually to study the word and teach, teach, teach. And teach those in his congregation who are positive. And how he is going to teach that? Not the things that he thinks in his hallucination. Lord spoke to him in a vision or a dream. But he teaches them that what he studies deriving from the ice concept. Isagogical, categorical and exegetical study. And if he fails to teach that, then what is the purpose of the ministry in this pulpit? He is no way a pastor at all and is no way to be called as a God successful pastor until and unless he starts ice communication on the pulpits isagogical categorical and exegetical study and that is the only order of the day and that is the only renewal of the day and that is the only revival that could ever happen to the present era of apostasy in today's christendom apostasy is nothing but rejection of true bible doctrine and acceptance of false bible doctrine like the miracles healings gifts personal counseling paying penance and tithes anything apart from Exegetical communication of Bible doctrine is false doctrine. Whatever you reject the truth, 
is acceptance of false doctrine in your souls. And Satan wants always to you to be based your holiness not in doctrine but in the useless and worthless things of this world which Satan allures you at every instant of your breath. In fact, even some scientific phenomena which have raised, they are telling to the point that there is no immaterial soul which is eternal. They say there is nothing like the soul. There, they say there is nothing like the spirit. And the so-called moron pastors who are occupying into the Roman Catholicism and they're organizing their own business points by telling they have a name by CID, which is Christ India Disciple, headed by the so-called cults into their minds. They are telling the soul is not an immortal one. They are telling there will be no activated human spirit. They are telling into their own minds that evolution is Big Bang Theory. They are telling the aliens are nothing, the angels are nothing but the cherubims are nothing but the aliens. They are telling the UFO technology is the way how Lord communicated to them in his kill one. And when such kind of uh, false doctrines are being inculcating, are being injected, are being adulterated to the right doctrine, wherewith you as a believer, if you could have your life on this earth, maybe 60 years or 70 years to the maximum, and in the 60 or 70 years, you lose the first 30 years for your life to be settled, and then next 10 years for your kids to be settled, and then the next 20 years, that is from 40 to 60, then you will try to learn what is Bible doctrine. And you know, in any field, what does it take? It takes time to become an expert. If you want to play guitar, have successfully it takes minimum five to ten years of hard work then you can play the guitar like the legends just handling it one day or weekly once will never make you to be called as a legend and to become a professor you know what first you need to be studying and then you can teach exactly in the same manner from 40 to 60 those 20 years are not enough time because some men take 1800, some men take 3 years, some men take 6 years to be edified to the complex of the soul. Apostle Paul took 3 years. Day and night he struggled. Day and night he went along to get those things. He didn't even consume food and water. The first priority for him was Bible doctrine. If that could be for you from the age of 40 till to the age of 60, those 20 years, then too you will take less time. Because you know, daily, every day, morning, one hour, evening, one hour, preaching the word of the Lord, it takes minimum to complete the entire Bible from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, at least 40 to 50 years. And if in those 20 years only, from the age of 40 to 60 or from the age of 40 to 70, if you have learned only half of the doctrine, then who will learn the remaining half of the doctrine, dear brother? What is your life? Have you ever counted? Have you ever thought? Have you ever calculated how many days that you are going to be here on this world and how you are going to calculate them to the glory of the Lord? And since such kind of a moron pastor teachers are occupying the pulpits who do not even have a vision of the future, as David prayed long back in the book of Psalms, Lord, count me, help me to count my days to the wisdom of thy glory. Make straight my paths. Have you ever prayed for that? Have you ever thought of that? And you know what? Weekly once they preach some useless sermons in the pulpits. And if in a year you have 52 weeks, 52 sermons. And from 40 to 60, if you are surviving for 20 years. And then you should count 20 into 50 years. And if you could count, it will be somewhere around 1,000 sermons. That's it. In those 1,000 sermons, what are you going to learn? And in those 1,000 sermons, what are you going to be edified? What topics you need to be taught? That if you not miss the church for weekly ones. Because the seriousness of the knowledge of Bible doctrine will not come to a man until and unless his first criteria have been fulfilled, the basic necessities of this life. But he will never think the only basic fundamental foundation to your life is Bible doctrine, then all the basic necessities of this earth will be fulfilled. They go contrary to Matthew 6.33, which tells to us, First you search me, seek my kingdom and my righteousness and everything will be added unto you. But here, the contrary to such kind of average moron pastors or the believers who have been occupying into this puyus, 
they come around telling to the point, first let me settle my things. First let me get me a good job. First let me get a good wife. First let me have some children and then take care of my parents and then construct my own home. Then if I have time, I will give to the Lord. You know, this is the reverse process. And that's why Lord Jesus Christ was very clear to the point, be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And you know what? In today's Christendom, the apostate pastors are encouraging them to believe and to realize a lie which has been sure of. Telling to the point, if you are fine with the Lord, if your relationship is right with the Lord, then you will be materially prospered to the maximum. And money has nothing to be done to that spiritual happiness which you find in the doctrine. Men gain or count their blessedness with material things of this world, but never want they, but they never want to count the blessings which they have been found for them spiritually in the heavenlies. That's why they have these very doctrines. That's why they have these hallucinations. That's why they preach such kind of idiotic messages in the pulpits. And in this moron pastor teacher who tells the UFA technology with the aliens is the latest thing in the angelic realm. And this moron pastor he tells Lord's second advent is not there. He is not coming. But rather he's going to just come and appear and take away the people. We never know why they want to be like this Candiza running up and down. Why they are not immutable. Why they are not looking into the veracity. Why they are not having faith in God's absolute standards of word. You know why? Men have become rejectors of the truth. Men are loving to love, or they are living to love a lie rather than the truth. Men are loving to stay in darkness rather than the light. Men want such kind of an hallucination messages, telling, thinking to the point, it is a direct, fresh revelation apart from Bible which has been given to me. The words which Jeremiah spoke long back, the words which Lord and Savior Jesus Christ communicated through Moses from Genesis 1-1 till after the completion of canon in Revelation 22-21 though they have been 2,000 years back, 3,000 years back or in fact even 4,000 years back they still apply to this generation as well that is why it has been written heaven and earth may pass away but not his word his word is what we are considering to the point of Bible doctrine Lord spoke before the completion of canon through visions and dreams, through various prophecies, through various miracles, to establish the sign of covenant, to establish or to make known that he was being sent by the authority of Lord through the apostles to establish their authority as well. To establish the authority of signship, Messiah used those miracles to tell them, yes, I am the true Messiah. But in today's Christendom, if you could look, pseudo-Christianity, false teachings, rejection of true doctrine, and replacement with false doctrines have been rampant to the core. The God ordained ministry of a pastor teacher gift, his responsibility, his obligation, though he accepts as a position as pastor, he has really not used it to the maximum. The faithfully prepared pastor teacher concentrates on only one thing, rightly dividing the word of truth under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when he is energized or he is activated in spirit, God energized through consistency, accuracy, and exegetical communication of Bible doctrine from his pulpit. His sheep can become spiritually self-sustaining, able to stand on their own two feet. The command to the pastor teacher is very clear. Preach the word, caruso, thon, logan, and not to tell your visions or dreams which will prove you that you are a psychic patient 
and they should put you shortly into the mental ward where the people can take you and make you a thorough treatment to correct your thinking. After the completion of canon, Lord speaks to us through only one media, which is Bible doctrine. And that's why this uniquely communicational, spiritual gift of a leader one has been bestowed upon us. The body of Christ, which cannot be equipped for dispense in the angelic conflict without the proper function of this uniquely important communication and leadership gift. Believers may think that they can understand the truth. Since they do not understand, nor they go for spiritual advance or through spiritual maturity, they are even making a sure recipe of distortion and misunderstanding of God's truth. And their congregation can never advance to spiritual maturity where there is no doctrinal content in the pastor's message. Far less they could attend to such kind of a meetings and get could and get spiritually matured for three hours in those literal three days to be preached. Every day one hour, that's it. And never we can know what is the thing. Tragically, apostasy is rampant in our pulpits today. For too many men with the gift of a pastor teacher have positioned themselves as advocates of human viewpoint. Rather than entrusted communicators of the inherent canon of scripture, either unprepared or unwilling to study and teach, they understand nothing. As their own spiritual growth ceases, they impose human standards upon God's perfect instruction until the systems of grace and divine provision are obscured. Many of these pastors are dynamic speakers who may even inspire the lives of their listeners, but apart from a ministry grounded in God's word and empowered by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, they move headfirst into apostasy, like the pastors about whom Paul warned Timothy, their sermons are empty talk based on the influence of based on the influence of human viewpoint in their souls. And what is the goal of such pastors? The goal of such pastors are to become an attracting crowd, and they attempt to achieve this in many ways. As alternatives to Bible teaching, they offer personal visitation, counseling, social programs, speculative prophecy, and emotional-based worship services. And this is what many have been easily led to fix their attention upon the secondary things and to neglect wholly the one primary thing. And Satan has blinded their eyes toward that which is of eternal value through such kind of a moron pastor teachers who are not really transformed, really renovated, really having that intrinsic value of nature as per the mind of Christ, as per the word of the Lord, and to really divide the word of God into accurate goal. This is what, dear brethren, what little theology which comes from these pulpits is primarily false. Attaining or maintaining salvation through works and rituals. Spirituality through the now use of defunct spiritual gifts like healing, man's liberation through social engineering and various other, various other philosophies that confuse and detract from the person, work and significance of Christ. Since this is devil's world, false doctrine is very popular. As Paul warned, it spreads like cancer. They are deluded believers in every generation drawn to the teaching of an apostate pastor. Every time such such kind of an apostate pastor leader stands up to speak, the souls of his followers move deeper into confusion and further from biblical truth. And this is the fate of today's Christendom. And the only solution for this is to start renewing once again the pulpits with the ICE communicational concept and the dispensing technique of rightly dividing the word of truth. And if they fail to understand the simple dogmatical truths, it is not a big deal for us to answer by Zakirnaik or the cults. But let's first correct our own Christendom teachers, give them the importance of Bible doctrine, because the fifth phrase which my Lord spoke on the cross has a double significance, not only to the unbelievers, even to the believers as well. I am thirsty, the way how Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave top priority for Bible doctrine. And how is it that we can give top priority for Bible doctrine? Until and unless you know the technique of dispensation. Until and unless you have a right and true heart towards learning Bible doctrine. That is what, dear brethren, which I am intending to tell to you again and again, again and again, top priority, number one to be on primary target. And those primary things in this world are nothing but Bible doctrine. And if you fail to understand the simple dogmatical truths, let Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. But it is my humble plea for you again and again to tell to you all, do not waste your time by listening to such kind of an hallucination-minded stories. Do not waste your time by looking into miracles. Do not waste your time by looking into healings or XYZ activities that are happening through tongues and the strategy and the tactical victory of Satan wherewith it is trying to achieve in today's Christendom of this 20th century. I may be a fool for you to tell again and again repeatedly, telling to the point you top priority for Bible doctrine.
person and you all may be wise more than me telling thinking to yourself this guy always tells about doctrine but dear brethren doctrine is the only ultimate goal for a pastor teacher wherewith he has been divinely ordained with the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher so that his work is to feed the flock with the manna of spiritual one and that spiritual manna on his part is to study like a faithful drudge study and come faithfully prepared and tell to you the word of the lord again and again inculcation word of the lord word of the lord word of the lord so that word of the lord is our lamp word of the lord is our light word of the lord is our salt so that we can preserve ourselves blameless when we appear in the judgment seat of christ so that we can walk in the fortiso so that we were aware what will be our future things like after rapture what millennium what and what we have in the future things and word of the lord is our lamp so that while we are still alive in this earth which is darkness realm then too the word of the lord alone is our torch to be walking in this darkness so that directly you can know the past for lord's glory because this devil's world is been a world of unbelievers and perishing one and this devil world is darkened and to know and to understand the light and since your soul should not be darkened again with the worldliness of these thoughts the thought pattern of this world you need to you need to learn the light the light and the thought pattern of the light is bible doctrine and if you do not have bible doctrine if you do not have the commandments of my lord in your heart then no matter what it is you are not going to survive in this world so with this few exhortations i will end up my tape and in the next episode shall continue some of the things pertaining towards which lord leads us to tell for you in the exemplification of the importance of bible doctrine so that we can give top priority and be aware of the leaven of the pharisees and look unto the christ which is our spiritual manna so with our head bowed and our eyes closed closing moments being dedicated to those who are without christ without hope and without eternal life inaudible in the privacy of this soul when they tell to lord god the father that they believe upon his son lord and savior jesus christ that is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life and this eternal life is for their own and this eternal life is for them by a simple act of faith and this simple act of faith is nothing but expressing your volition positively listening to the gospel which is to believe in the lord and savior jesus christ and expressing your telling your volition in the privacy of your soul that you believe upon that lord and savior jesus christ as our messiah who can give you eternal life graciously since you have an immortal soul that immortal soul with your activated demon spirit can make you to understand the infinite intelligence of the lord and if you fail to reject and if you fail to believe this and reject lord and savior jesus christ then your attitude towards your our lord and savior jesus christ determines your eternal future and which way you go dear brethren you think but whereas for a believer time for you is to grow in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine and if you fail to give top priority for bible doctrine and if you think the useless ignorance on the vanity or negligence of this world a top priority than bible doctrine that is your secondary things giving primary focus and lord help you at the judgment seat of christ though i have been given this great privilege great opportunity though i have been termed out as alakana ketesis in this unique dispensation of the church age and if you are not the one where with lord desires you to be then the failure is on the part of a pastor teacher in your pulpit and in return the failure on part of you as a believer because you do not desire doctrine to be taught weekly once will never transform you though if you take every day more than 2 to 4 hours it will take minimum 10 to 20 years to get your renovation done minimum 10 to 20 years and at the age of 40 if you think having serious importance to bible doctrine you know by 60 years you will be half a way and still half of the way is left over to be done and when and how you will take dear brother and those things to live the unique spiritual life spiritual self, through spiritual self esteem and followed by spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity lord help you to direct your paths to be renovated in your thinking to learn and to apply and to relearn and to apply your mind to give top priority for the edification complex of the soul by learning and learning and learning and relearning bible doctrine So Father we are grateful for the privilege that you have given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things that are studied so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. To this section we pray in the name of King of Kings and Lord of Lords, even Lord Jesus Christ our savior Father. Amen.